Uber recently announced that in some markets, it is updating the rates that it pays for your mileage and time. What's that mean to you? Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody, Mark here from Uber Hints and what a 24 hours it has been. Um, I don't know how many of you are sports fans, but the Milwaukee Brewers were in game seven and one more game, one more game, and they'd be in the World Series. And regrettably, the Dodgers took it. So they went as far as they could possibly go without making it to the series. And it was really unfortunate that it had to happen here in our own backyard. But what does that mean for me as an Uber driver? It meant that there was a lot going on for the past few days. And I um, started driving yesterday. Uh, late in the afternoon, as you know, I typically do not like to do the late night drives, but um, I did last night. And man, around here, it's just been so weird. I started out the day, I was just wiped out and I'm still kind of feeling it today. Um, I hadn't mowed the lawn in a while and I've been, I kept putting it off because we've had bad weather and it's been cold and rainy and everything you can imagine. So yesterday, the skies didn't look good, but I said, I'm going to get out and I'm going to finally get this lawn mowed. And of course, I started mowing the lawn. And what happened first, the winds just started up and hail started coming down. It wasn't too bad, small hail. And so I kept at it. And then the snow started. Yes, you heard me right, snow. Now, today is a beautiful day. Right now, it's 50 degrees. But yesterday, while I was mowing the lawn, the snow came. Now, it wasn't heavy. It wasn't sticking. But it was still snow swirling about. And uh, that's what I was dealing with. And my hands were so cold when I came in. And I got into a hot shower. And those of you who live in cold weather areas will know what I'm talking about. It didn't even feel like the shower was actually lukewarm, but it felt like it was just boiling water on my hands because my hands were so cold. So anyway, uh, so that was uh, kind of my afternoon. And then I started driving because I knew that the game started at 7.09. So I started driving at um, about 5 o'clock, 5.15, something like that. And I'll tell you, it was nonstop. I was taking people to the bars. Everyone wanted to go out. Everyone wanted to be a part of, uh, you know, this this big event of Final Game 7. And so I uh, did, I only did one um, ride to Miller Park because it was kind of late. You know, starting that late, um, only an hour and a half before game time. But I took one run to Miller Park, but I was doing a lot of bar runs. And then it slowed down a little bit, so I switched over to Eats, and the Eats were kind of nonstop, and the tips were really good, because people were watching the game. And uh, then at the end of the game, people were kind of in dour, sour mood. I didn't get as many, as big a tips as I suspect I would have gotten had the Brewers pulled it off and had they won. But nevertheless, it was a very busy night. And as I said, I typically don't do the bar runs, but I figured this is going to be a good night for the bar patrons. So after I got done at Miller Park, I came back to my home turf. And sure enough, the bar runs were steady, really steady, just about till bar time. Uh, game, you know, ended, I don't know what time the game ended. And it just went, it just went nonstop. So I probably got home maybe two, you know, sometime after two. I'll have to check when my last ride was. And then I got up this morning and I started all over again. And not early this morning. It was maybe 10-ish. But there was a lot of business again. Because I think the strangest thing that ever, I don't even know what time it is now. I have my clock off. It's, uh, I don't know, three in the afternoon, something like that, four. And... Uh, the weirdest one, a guy wanted me to take him to Miller Park. And I'm thinking, why does he want to go to Miller Park? And his story was, um, first of all, you have to understand, tickets to those games, playoff games, were really expensive. I think the cheapest seat was like $100. And uh, they were selling standing room only and everything else. But 
This guy apparently had gone to the game and he was going to meet his friends there. Why they didn't go together is anyone's guess, but he's going to meet his friends there. And at the end of the night, he said, you know, they were drinking. And so they they went out and took Uber, went home and took, I, I don't know, I didn't really quiz him on it. But regardless, he left his car there. And I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, they don't allow cars to be left overnight at Miller Park. That guy's car is towed. I'm thinking, how am I going to deal with this, right? Um, surprise, surprise, I got there and his car was still there. It had an orange sticker on it or something on his windshield, but um, it was still there. So I guess they were just putting it there. Maybe they were being kinder to people and just warning that. There were actually a lot of cars there and I, I figure some of it might have been people coming, you know, to work, to clean up today. Um, there's, a, there's a restaurant there. So I don't know what was going on, but there were more cars there than I thought. And so... Anyhow, good for him. He got his car and everything was good. And now I'm tired and I'm actually, I'm parked in the parking lot of Walgreens. I'm going to get my flu shot now. And then tomorrow I'm off for uh, New Hampshire. So I'm going to be in the Manchester area. If anyone, my viewers are from Manchester, maybe you can give me some things I can do around Manchester. Or maybe I'll get you as my Uber driver. Who knows? And speaking of people viewing, I did get this um, this email the other day, and I wanted to talk to it today. And it was about rate changes, once again. Now, this particular one, thank you, Glenn, by the way, this particular one, I believe, is in Chicago. Uh, I don't know if the driver who sent it to me was from Chicago, but when I tried to log in, it wouldn't let me access these rates, this information, other than what I was sent. Uh, it gave me the landing page, but it wouldn't let me access any deeper information because I don't drive in the Chicago market. And here's what it said. And I'm sure some of us are getting these depending on what market we're in. But there's something interesting going on here that I wanted to share with you. And I want to get your feedback on and see what your thoughts are. We know that a consistent and dependable earnings are important to you. In a step toward creating more reliable earnings experience, we're updating our time and distance rates to make earnings more reflective of the time you put in, no matter where your trip takes you. Okay, so what they're talking about here, we're going to change your time. And I'm thinking, hey, this is sounding pretty good. You can expect your overall trip earnings to stay the same as a result of the update. Hmm, that one confuses me. Let's talk about why in a second. What's changing? We're increasing the per minute rate. Hey, yippee! And decreasing your per mile rate. Boo! For UberX, UberPool, and UberXL. Whether it's a two mile trip or a 20 mile trip, your time will be valued. See, this is starting to sound like a lot of gobbledygook to me right now. Your time will be valued. You can see your new rates in the Ferris tab of your partner portal. Time and, distant rates, uh, time and distance rates will only update in select cities in the U.S., so I'm not seeing this in my market, but uh, apparently the Chicago market um, is seeing this as of uh, a couple days ago. And select cities in the U.S., check your email or your driver app for more information on the rate updates in your city. How will this affect my... Well, first of all, let's talk about what the rate updates were. I'll put it up here. Uh, you can see it says that the time for both UberX and Pool has increased 33%. Now, that's like, wow, 33%. That, that's a full third, right? Distance is decreasing 19%. Where do we get more of our money? Do we get more of our money through time or distance? Time is usually much smaller and it's negligible. So, uh, I don't know. But it says, how will this affect my earnings? You can expect your overall earnings to remain the same. We're putting more value on time to help you create more consistent and dependable earnings no matter where your next trip takes you. Much ado about nothing. Twice in this little short um, online explanation, it says you can expect your overall earnings to remain the same. It says that twice. It says that in the introductory paragraph, 
You can expect your overall trip earnings to stay the same as a result of the update. And it says it under the heading, how will this affect my earnings? You can expect your overall earnings to remain the same. So, if I can expect my overall earnings to remain the same, why the change? Why are they bragging that they want to make the earnings more reflective of my time, that they want them to be more dependable, that they value us? If twice, twice in this little tiny piece here, it says expect your earnings to remain the same. I don't understand. If it's a zero-sum game, why do it in the first place? I, I can't even, without actually doing a real comparison with the rates in Chicago and take some test drives, it's hard for me to say. But people who are in Chicago, viewers in Chicago, I'd like you to do me this favor. Look over, I don't know, a half a dozen, a dozen trips that you took maybe last week. And then look at a half a dozen or a dozen trips that you took this week. Find some that are comparable time and distance and see what's happening. I, and also, I want to see what's happening more so than with your take. What's happening with Uber's take? That's what I suspect is happening. I suspect this is another one of, the, of those things where the passenger is paying marginally more. But as they stated twice, your earnings remain the same. And when they do things like that, it's just another one of those kind of goofy things where it looks like, well, nothing's happening to you. We didn't hurt you. Sort of like when they come out with the, uh, with the increases for the pickup fees, right? The initial booking fee. And then they come on and say the initial booking fee. But, but don't worry, drivers. It's not going to affect you at all. Except how it affects us is driver, riders are paying more and drivers are still getting paid the same. Because in that case, because we're based on time and mileage. No longer. It just seems like another tricky way of pulling away from that um, 25, 75, or 20, 80 percentage break. And I'm sorry for being a cynic. I really am. It's the reason that I'm asking for people to give me a real-life evaluation so we can get more data. I just can't imagine a company the size of Uber is going to make that kind of a change if the end result is nothing. The end result remains the same. If our pay is the same, why are they doing it? The only other reason I can think of is their pay is going to be higher. I mean, ask yourself. I know people say, Mark, you're getting negative. You're getting to be a gloomy Gus. I, I hear that stuff. And I understand why people might think that. But in this case, what else can the reason possibly be? Why would you start to manipulate fares? Why would you start to manipulate, well, it's not fares, it's the what comes to us, right? Why would you start to manipulate miles and minutes if it's going to be the exact same outcome? There has to be a reason. There has to be a reason. The only reason I can think of is Uber's getting more because they're not giving us any reason. They're saying, here's what's going to happen. Don't worry. It's going to be the same fee. We value your time. We value your time so much, we're going to pay you more for your time. But we're going to take away from your miles. Your miles, which do what? Takes more gas, uh, more wear and tear in the car. Your miles is where more of our expenses are. Our expenses aren't in our time. Our expenses are in our miles. Because our miles is where everything that we have to pay for. Like I said, you know, miles is where tires wear down. Miles is where... Uh, it, it builds up towards our next oil change. Miles is where our, our vehicles are getting used. So I have to believe that Uber is somehow coming out ahead in this. What do you think? I'd love to hear your comments down below. As always, I love it when you like the videos, share the videos, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Mark with Uber Hints.